a piece of line in New York Harbor in front of the Statue of Liberty. We determined it was not wrapped around a prop. It was Hold gone on, by the time we left the harbor. You already got diesel on you. We don't need you to get drunk or dunk. Maybe hooked on the rudder instead of the prop. Yeah, just bring it up there and tie it. Be careful, you've got the uh, cruise ship behind us. Yeah. Hey, watch out. Hey. Yeah, here's another one coming between us. I see that. Yeah. Go forward, there's one in front of me. Yeah, yeah. Well, just. You're good now, yep. After leaving New York City Harbor, going under the uh, Vernanzo Narrows Bridge, we're looking for Sandy Hook, New Jersey. Sandy Hook is a sand barrier up to a mile wide and six miles long at the northern end of the New Jersey shoreline. Whales and dolphins were seen eating off Sandy Hook. Dennis located diesel fuel at an inlet called Mana Asphalt. Also, they had one transit slip left at $6 per foot. We almost had some damage to equipment on the boat going through that railroad drawbridge by getting too close to the port side where a 30 foot outrigger standing much higher than the boat almost came in contact with the elevated part of the bridge. This fishing equipment would have cost over $6,000 to replace. The marina was full of high-end tournament style fishing boats, not one sailboat. Our 35-year-old fishing boat was about 30 years older than any other boat docked there. A very nice restaurant and bar at the end of the dock just packed with people on a Wednesday evening. This club had a balcony overlooking a kind of ego alley. The last steel photo shows a runabout leaving. He's leaving in a hurry because he ran into the side of the uh, large pontoon tourist boat at the extreme left. of people 
fishing off the sides of the inlet early in the morning on our way out to the Atlantic Ocean. Seaside Heights, New Jersey. This is the town the TV show Jersey Shore was filmed in for the first season. Everybody say hi to Snooky. The new season of Jersey Shore coming up is to be filmed at the Atlantic City Inlet. A discovery was made that we had no water at the sinks. It was traced back to the hot water tank where the water line had vibrated off the fitting and all the water on board had leaked into the bilge and was pumped overboard. If it's going to happen, it will happen out here. Atlantic City. Remember staying in a hostel just off the boardwalk during a short summer break in college back in 1965. Wildwood, New Jersey. Remember staying in a tent in the rain behind Wildwood and the campground flooding in the middle of the night. That night was the very start of Hurricane Agnes, June of 1972. considered the easiest military branch in terms of physical fitness. It is by far the hardest to join. decision had to be made to spend the night here in the canal or push on to the Delaware Bay and home port. Fuel attendants and dentists thought it was only a couple of hours across the Delaware Bay to the C&D Canal. I knew it was about five hours. No head, no onboard water made me think to push on and make it home later tonight. the Delaware Sound, but I knew that we had to go the whole way up 
found almost Philadelphia to find the entrance to the canal. exit to the Delaware Sound is the Luz Ferry Terminal. So both ferries were there when we arrived just a little before 5 p.m. One ferry was moving back and forth like trying to park. We wanted to give way a lot of room for him. There were two small red buoys in the middle of the canal behind these ferries. We have been keeping all of the red marks to our starboard or right hand side of the boat. The moment we tried to put these two buoys to our right, we ran aground. We were not going very fast because of waiting on the ferries to park. chart plotter on the boat is giving him a reading of about 10 to 15 foot depths. At this point the sound is about 14 miles wide and he is navigating three quarters of a mile from the uh, shipping channel when we hit a three foot depth. Yes, we ran aground for the second time in about two hours. We turned around and backtracked our plotter course to where we had crossed out of the shipping channel to find our way back up the channel. This took about an hour of covering our course up the Delaware Bay. With about 17 miles to the canal entrance and it getting very dark, we motored into a rainstorm. I know! We're near land! Blake, Blake. Do you hear that? I apologize for not having camera footage of this. The camera was down in the cabin below and it was too dangerous to go down and back up a ladder during the conditions we were in. So I have to use other forms of visuals to complete our story. We were not lost or having additional boat problems we passed two dredging barges along the edge of the channel with all kinds of an additional lights in the pitch black darkness of the night and rains at the time. It was about all the excitement an old guy like me could handle. The rain has passed and the canal was well marked with yellow lights so it was easy to navigate another eight miles to home port. We arrived at the uh, marina around 10.45 and tied up to the nearest dock for the night, moving the boat in the morning to its assigned dock. A powerboat, 35 years old and not used the last two years except for starting the engines a couple times, I did not give us much hope of making it the whole way. But we made it. 
no operating head, no fresh water, and one engine running a little warm. Upon inspection of the raw water pump showed movement in the pump's pulley. We were lucky we did not lose the seal around the shaft with the bearings wearing out. Rob has now replaced both raw water pumps with new. boating experiences. I believe the new owner of this boat was exposed to about 10 years ago. Sailboaters or sailors call these power boats stink pots. Well, my wife said she had to wash my clothes twice to remove the diesel oil smell. 